Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Well, today is the fourth Sunday of Lent, Laetare Sunday, from the word for rejoice. For many of us, this may seem like a funny day to rejoice. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot to celebrate in the world around us. But perhaps this comes at the fitting time. After all, Laetare Sunday marks the halfway point of Lent, where even though we're still in this penitential season, we can see the end in sight. We can see the resurrection that we long for in the distance. And so hopefully this gives all of us hope that as our Lent has become probably a lot different than we expected and has involved a sort of penitence that none of us bargained for, that there is still hope and we can look towards the future with hope even though we still have quite a bit of Lent left to go. And so with that hope and in times of trouble, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him. For this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in his hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths, for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the va dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. 
You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Glory and praise to you. O Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed, and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? And he said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him, how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? There was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he can speak for himself. 
His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, He is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, That is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a blind person before. But this man, if this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that he had been, they had thrown him out, he found him and said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's readings obviously are all about light and darkness, blindness and sight. But of course, when Jesus talks about blindness and sight, he's not talking about it the same way we usually do. He's not just talking about the ability to see things. He's talking about the ability to really see things, to see what's beneath the surface, to see things as they truly are. And in order to see things as they truly are, they need to be looked at in the proper light. You know, there are lots of things in this world that only you can fully appreciate when they're shown in the proper light. You know, when they hang a painting in a museum, they make sure the light is shined on it in a very particular way that brings out all the colors and shadings and textures that you wouldn't otherwise see. Even police officers investigating a crime scene have all sorts of special lights at their disposal to help them see, you know, blood stains and uh, footprints and all of those other pieces of physical evidence that wouldn't be visible with the naked eye. It all goes to show that sometimes even though you think you've seen something, you haven't really seen it at all unless you see it in the proper light. Well, in today's Gospel, Jesus starts off by telling us that he is the perfect light. He says that while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And what that means is that when we have Jesus in our lives, or more accurately, when we have Jesus at the very center of our lives, nothing else looks the same. You know, we see everything differently, our world, each other, even ourselves, when we look at those things in the light of Christ. I think most of us can kind of get a sense of what Jesus is talking about because all of us know what it's like to be in the light versus being in the darkness. You know, if you're outside in a well-lit area, then you can see the potential dangers all around you. And you can do something about it. You can avoid them or prepare for them. If you're walking around in the dark, you never know what potential dangers lie just around the corner. Well, it's the same with the light of Christ. If Jesus is the most important thing in our lives, 
then we really can see sin for what it is. We can see just how dangerous and harmful and ugly sin is. And that helps us to do something about it, to avoid it, to prepare for it, or even at least to feel badly about it. But without Jesus, our world tends to think that sin is harmless or even enticing. It doesn't know the truth until the damage has already been done. Well, the same is true when you uh, come back home and turn on the lights. You can instantly get a picture of just how clean or dirty your house is. You know, which parts are in good working order and which parts are in need of a little cleaning or repair. You know, if the lighting is bad, you might think everything's fine. You probably think it's in a little better shape than it actually is. Well, it's the same with the light of Christ. If Jesus is the most important thing in our lives, then we see every part of our life more clearly. It becomes a lot more apparent which parts of our lives are in good working order and which parts of our lives aren't and require some attention. Without Jesus, we're liable to think that we're in a lot better shape than we really are. And we're liable to keep making the same mistakes over and over again. And then, of course, in the light, we can see a whole lot of beauty revealed around us. You know, whether it's that light that's hitting a painting in a museum, or a beautiful sunset that illuminates a landscape, or an ultrasound that lights up the baby in the womb. You know, without that light, that beauty is still right in front of us, but we don't see it, we don't appreciate it, we don't respect and honor it. Well, it's the same thing with the light of Christ. If Jesus is the most important part of our lives, then we realize that we are surrounded by evidence of his beauty and goodness. And we can stand in awe of the majesty of his creation or the miracle of human life. And we're also a whole lot more likely to be able to see the goodness of the person standing right in front of us. Without Jesus, that beauty is still right there, but we miss it, we take it for granted, or we disregard it. And so without Christ, not only do we fail to see sin and evil for what it is, but we also fail to appreciate and be uplifted by the beauty right around us. And that's why Jesus, towards the end of today's gospel, tells the Pharisees that they are blind, even though they claim to see. Because the Pharisees stubbornly refused to accept Jesus, they missed out on so much good. I mean, they missed out on the goodness and wisdom of the man born blind as he spoke to them. They missed out on the incredible miracle that took place right in front of their eyes. They missed out on God himself, the God that they professed to love so much, standing right in front of them and speaking to them. And so it's no coincidence that at the end of the gospel, the only person who is filled with joy and peace and a sense of purpose and hope for the future isn't one of the Pharisees who was ambitious and well-respected and powerful. No, it was the man born blind, the poor humble man who trusted completely in Jesus. We would be wise to learn from his example. Because when we look around the world, there are plenty of reasons to despair, especially at this point in the life of our world. There are plenty of reasons to look around and throw up our hands and feel hopeless. And certainly we have a lot of problems to deal with. But we will only deal with them properly if we see them in the perfect light. If We see them in the light of Christ. Because when we look at our world in the light of Christ, we will also see plenty of reasons to have hope. Plenty of reasons not to despair, and plenty of reasons to trust that Jesus will lead us on the right path no matter what obstacles lie in our way. So even though this may be a hopeless or desperate time in the eyes of many, as Christians we should see the world differently because we see all things in the light of Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now in faith, let us offer these prayers to the mercy of our loving Father. For the church, may God help us to remain faithful to all his commandments and grow in the fullness of truth and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, may God give them and grant them fortitude in their decision-making and wisdom in their laws. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, especially due to the coronavirus, May the healing power of Jesus come upon them and bring them comfort and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those for whom this crisis is a financial burden, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those gathered today in prayer, especially those unable to attend Mass, may the Holy Spirit increase in us a spirit of conversion and openness to his work in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they, through the mercy of God, rest in the fullness of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the parishioners of Christ the King, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these prayers we've just offered out loud and those that each one of us holds in the silence of our hearts. Answer them according to your holy will, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith, and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out and without end acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Kevin our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy then freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. A sign of peace to all of you who are watching us at home. God bless you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just want to take a moment to thank all of you for joining in the celebration of this Mass. We know that as part of a universal church, one mystical body united in Christ the head, that even though we are not physically together, we are joined together in a very real way in prayer. And so we love you and miss you uh, and look forward to the day when we can be together in this church and celebrate the Mass as one family in Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.